All right, you lack of time. Only want to see my face for 10 minutes, legends. Welcome into this buy, hold, risk, and sell rapid fire. Angus Crichton's going to kick things off, guys, at 442K. I think he's a great buy this week. He was awesome in 80 minutes on the weekend. If he only gets 60, then I think he's like a 40 to 45 type of scorer. If he happens to get that 80 minutes, I think he can get closer to 50, and he's priced at 32. So Crichton, a good purchase this week, but Satili on the bench is the main Worry there. Let's go to KL Euro. And he's got a negative break even here after his 49 two rounds ago before their buy. And he definitely has the upside with tackle breaks, with, with his running, and then could score some tries against the Bunnies this week. So I do think it's a perfect week to grab Euro. But also there's some worry that Talakai, who's on the bench, if Euro doesn't play that well, could go straight into that center position and take his spot, just like we saw with Talangi last week, who is a sell. That is Blaze Talangi. So, Eero, a good buy this week as well, but risky at that. James Schiller, I think, is much less of a buy than what KL is, obviously with a negative break even as well, but is more expensive, and we've seen over his career, he hasn't been able to score very well. So, Schiller is a no from me in this one. We move to the next one being our great man, Chevy Stewart. So, 230K for him. He didn't look amazing in the trials, but we know he has a lot of quality. Rappen is out for six to eight weeks now. So I do think this is Chevy's spot to lose. He's 230K compared to that of 311 for Schiller. Yes, a bit of a higher break even, but has a little bit more of an opportunity to make some money in this week. So I think he's a, a solid purchase as well, but I would be grabbing KL over Chevy. But obviously, you know, it depends on if you need a wing fullback or not. Because if you do, then we have... Our next guy I'm going to talk about is Tom Chester at 350. So he does have a break even, just under 20 there. A 34 in his you know first game this year in the center position. Played 72 minutes and did have a try assist off a bat back there. So ran the footy well, 150 meters for three tackle breaks. Tackled well also. I expect that you'll get like a, a bit of a base out of him of about 25 and and could uh you know could get into the mid 30s. But he has a you know a couple of tougher matchups. You know Para shouldn't be too hard for him. And then you got Cronulla. Penrith and Dolphins, so three of our top top runners this this year. And a 350k, I think you should go for you know, what are the other options there. And if you don't need a, a fullback, then a center in, in Eero will be the play. Jai Gray, guys, at 230k. He's a you know, a really interesting option. He has a, a, a tough one this week against the, the Sharks, then has a bye next week into Melbourne and also Penrith. So I think like he could come out and get a good score this week. But he could also you know, only go okay and average 30 over the next few weeks. And with the buys that he has next week, that makes it a bit tough. For Chance Single Cookstart, you've got him and you've got Jaden Campbell, both 100K apart exactly. And with Chance, he averaged 42 last year, did get a big 65 in the, in the game just gone on the weekend, and didn't score a try. But two try savers in there, a turnover tackle to go along with his try assists with 263 meters. It was an incredible game for him. He doesn't have a super amount of upside. He only has one game above the 65 last year, and we know he had a, a cracking year. Campbell has more upside. I think he has close to 10 points of value, but in a tough team, you know, do you go for him this week after the big you know, two try saver, two turnover tackles? If Titans can get better, he'll, he'll be able to do really well, but up against a couple of tough matchups in the next few weeks in Canberra, Manly, um, you know, Warriors and Melbourne, who all have better defenses, does he get like 35s going forward or can he get into the 40s? Johnson at 814, he's a really solid one. Obviously, just with the 26s, he's low, 87 he's high. He finally scored a try this week. He's been getting try assists over the last few and back kicking goals. So I expect him to hit a 60 average. And if you want that in your side, then awesome. There's already a lot of people that own him just like yourself. Nico Hines, the best captaincy option for this week. So if you were interested in 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 him then that's a, a good way to play it this week um considering you know the situation that we ha have ourselves with a lot of us not having a, a terrific captaincy option we're going to want nico we are going to want to have cleary at some point and you know there's no better week like the present against the bunnies who are in a little bit of turmoil and uh, he should be able to score well against them we have tommy turbo him and ponga are really terrific buys this week turbos at 675 and is a, obviously a really really solid one to look at it does come up against the waz but then into the titans and para who yeah will be nice matchups for him and has a nice lower break even at around the 40 mark which is cool um and, and just got rolling against panthers so good news for him manu really solid one i'm not sure if he's the play that you want given he's a very similar price to turbo you can go to a bunch of other players as well 
At fullback this week, we know he's going to score well. He's been having a great season at center as well. So either way, he'll be fine. Uh, if you want Manu, you're grabbing him now and holding him, I think, for the entirety of the season. So that'll be the play. Tamari Martin, I think he's going to average close to 30, probably a 33 or something like that. So only has a little bit of value. He played incredible on the weekend. I don't see it going like that most weeks. I expect him to be around that 30 mark or just above for the most part. Pap, if you don't own guys, he has a terrific run over the next few weeks. Dogs, Roosters, Rabbitohs, and Titans there. Won't play Origin, most likely. So he's a, a terrific purchase if you don't own at 577. A slightly higher break even, but you know, nothing crazy at all. And at 577, I think he can average 50 for the year, priced at 41. Stefano, if you need a mid, guys, he's very interesting at 680. I think he's probably got a couple of points of value now. He's priced at 49. So if you like him, if you want to grab him, then that would be awesome. He's playing much bigger minutes. Uh, you can see he's had four games over 50 minutes, which is awesome. Jerome Hughes is 745. If you're looking for a half that's not named Heinz or Cleary, then I think Hughes is that guy. He you know, has scored you know, three really good games this year, round one, two, and then obviously five there, averaging 59 across those two in a really, really good spot, playing much better than he has, I think, last year and, and potentially the year before as well. So good to see him back killing it. He's got weapons either side of him, and I think he'll be able to be a 55 type of average, so maybe a couple of points undervalued. Sean Bloor, he's a, a real fun one to look at too at 526. I think he can average in the mid 40s. So if you look in the market for an edge, not named Angus Crichton, a little bit more expensive, but I think that a good chance he plays 80 minutes this week. We've seen here when he plays over 60 last year in 2023, average 48. So could definitely do that now. And he looks much better on the weekend. I think he can pop this week for sure. Dylan Lucas at 561. He's a, an interesting one, maybe more as like a three or four week play. But again, do we want to be using trades in that time? You know, after a few more weeks when we've got other you know fires to put out. So I think he's going to score well, but how long is he going to score well for? Aiken at 600K, again, I think he's going to score great over the next few weeks. We may not see Lemuelu for a while. So it would be a calculated gamble with Aiken very likely to average 50 over the next you know month or so and make some money, score well, edge and center jewel. There's nothing better, but I do think last week or the week before was the play with Aiken. Teddy, I think, is a sell, guys. Um, you can hold, but the higher break even, I do think that, you know, leading up to Origin now, there's other wing fullbacks you can purchase or, you know, you can trade him for any other position. Use him to help you get to Hines. There's a lot of question, things you can do there. So Tilly's a clear sell. Blaze Talungi, I think you can sell or hold and hope that he gets a spot back. I'm seeing Isaiah Yo be used in trade plan, so he's a a clear hold in my opinion. I think that he needs to be someone you hold minimum all the way till round 13 and, and can re-decide from there. With a low score of 57, you know, on the weekend he got 64 in 65 minutes with the HIA. So we know what he can do. And uh, yeah, I'd be wanting him in my side going forward. I think Taylor May, you can hold or sell. I think I'm earing on the side of holding given he comes up against the Tigers, Cowboys, Rabbitohs and Dogs after their buy has dual position, won't play Origin, plays round 13 and 14. There's a lot of good things and hopefully he can start to, you know, hopefully he can get his first try of the year. That would be nice. Liam Henry, I think you probably side more on the on the side of selling at 412. There's a lot of guys you can go to and free up some cash so you can get to Heinz or whatever you need. Terrell May, a low one last last week. Hopefully he comes back to some you know some great scores, and I think he will. Lowest score of 50 before that. Hopefully he gets his minutes again. If he doesn't, you can sell. Otherwise, I think he's a keeper for the entirety of the season if he can uh, turn up to the bus on time. DCE, an easy one to, to buy this week given he's lost a fair bit of cash after a slow start. He will kick goals this week, but Garrick will return the following week. And they do have Titans and Para after the Warriors here. So yeah, a fairly solid run for him and look like Daly is back to some of his best work. And we know he can be a 60, 62 type of guy, which is six to eight points undervalued. Eli Katoa, 700K here, priced at 50. Last week was probably the better week to get him, but this week you can also get him as well. I think he'll be like a 54, 55 guy this year if he can stay on the park and not get concussed. And in that case, he's a little bit undervalued for a guy that won't be playing Origin. So, you know, he's a top tier edge to look at. Happy Coruscant, 694. I think he's a hold this week, guys, and then reassess next week. If he's not goal kicking, if he's not playing 80 minutes, that could be a bit of a worry. But Dragons this week, he could easily score a try and set one up and go, you know, 70 plus and do well. Last two, we've got Josh Curran. I do think that he's still a really solid buy, but priced at 43 now, 
I think it's a little bit harder to you know see how much value he's got. He might still have five points of value, dual position, plays around 13 and 14 and 16. So that's all really cool. If you don't have a lot of dogs, he could be a buy. And last one is Jacob Caraz. I think he's a hold or a sell. Completely fine on either you know either part there. Price at 42. You look at this one, they've got Melbourne into Newcastle into a buy. He's only scored well in one game out of five. So you are banking that the next few games for him are low ones as well, which we can see with him over you know, over time. It does happen that he gets these sort of 30s and whatever else and then does decide to go bang in certain games. But uh, yeah, it's only happened in the one. And I doubt that it's going to happen against Melbourne this week after playing really good footy. So Karaz, hold or sell, completely fine on that. And that leaves us for the fast fire buy, hold, risk it, sell. I hope that helped you guys and I wish you all the best of luck heading into round six of the NRL Fantasy.